if you did rescape this, scape around 60, what would you like to see in there? Hi everyone, in this video I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of all of my scapes and some future plans. So starting off with a little no tech or low tech nano cube, no filter, no CO2. This basically gets its nutrients from the Highline 400, which is CO2 injected and high energy. So at the moment I'm doing weekly large water changes on this which is obviously helping the plants grow really well. Had a little bit of diatom outbreak, uh, but cleared that up and so far so good. We've even seen carpeting Marsalea Persuta, no it's Granata actually, at the bottom there. In fact, it's not, it's Marsalea Minuta now. Uh, Hydrocotyl Tripartita, this is a great way to add instant impact as an epiphyte uses lots of nutrients up, so it helps to reduce algae. And with that in mind, I'm also using Amazon frog bits or Limnibium lavagartum, the floating plant, which creates shade and also uses lots of nutrients. We've got some Monte Carlo there as an epiphyte as well. Even got a little stem of the Ludwigia palustris just wedged in there. Background plants are really interesting. This is Juncus or Juncus repens, which is not often used in scaping, but I really love the chaotic kind of uh, natural look it gives. I've got some Crypt Wendy TI Green, still adapting to its underwater form, but no melt as yet, which is interesting. Uh, the stem plant here, the feathery one, this is Myriophyllum matagrescensa. This is an absolute weed, probably grows quicker than Lemnophila sessiflora. Um, again, it's a great nutrient export. There is a step-by-step -step sort of cinematic tutorial of this scape and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, yeah, so it's just going really well. Hardscape is just a couple of pieces of huge, <laughs> huge uh, driftwood there, kind of in a crisscross formation. Um, I think there's just the one or two pieces of dragonstone there as well. It's just leftover stuff from my garden. Um, the wood was donated by Aquarium Gardens. And this is the Superfish Cube 15 and it's a really great entry level nano system. It comes with a filter and a light and it's low iron glass. So it's a really, really good way to enter into the world of aquascaping. I'm not using the filter, uh, like I say, just a um, low tech, no filter setup. And this will be for sale at Aquarium Gardens, probably in a few weeks or a couple of months or so. Moving over to probably my favorite aquarium in, in the home. This is the Tropica Aqua Cube, no longer produced put into production in 2005 and I think was only produced for a year or so because of, it's very expensive. It's a crystal glass and uh, yeah, really, really cute little system. It does come supplied with a light, but I've upgraded it to the Twinstar 200. Plants are the Rotala Hra, which is the only plant at the moment I'm maintaining. But I've recently added some more Hydrocotyl Tripartita uh, which will uh, need trimming. It's a very fast grower. It is home to some cherry shrimp near Caridina davidii, which are breeding quite prolifically, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some shots of some babies somewhere. They're not they're not hiding at the moment. But yeah, I did actually put probably 20 or so in here as well, so they'll probably start breeding in there when they're settled in. Uh, but yeah, this is a real joy to live with. Again, no filter, no CO2, and doing water changes with the uh, water from the big tank, the Highline 400. Been running for eight months or so now. So I really, really love this little system. Now we've got the Boy or Bear here. This is an Air 30. They do a 60 as well. Um, but this is just almost zero maintenance. All I do is top up the reservoir here with rainwater and uh, every morning it just gets misted. I just uh, override the misting system. You can see, it really is a lovely little system. Just some succulents there, some cacti. And uh, yeah, just a real nice addition to the home. A bit better in the distance there. Okay, moving over to the Staple Line 60s. 
This again is a low tech claim to a couple of juvenile angelfish which will be added to the Hyman 400s once they get too large. They have they have been growing actually, I've had them for about a month or so and I've seen some growth already so that's cool. Yeah, again this is low tech, no CO2 injection and it's actually a plain sand substrate as well so I do need to add a liquid fertiliser and all my tanks I use uh, either the Uaze um, Daily Verts which is a scaper, it's a sort of scaper line vert and uh, Tropica Specialised Nutrition. Imagine actually 5 mil of the Specialised Nutrition here every day because there is quite a lot of nutrient requirement from the loading plants which I thin out every week or so, just a handful of the unhealthiest looking frog bit. It's actually a really good plant to indicate nutrients because, because it's the fastest growing, it's the first one that shows any sign of nutrient deficiency. So we can see here, there's some signs there. And all I do is just remove the unhealthiest portions and let the healthiest portions take over. It's important not to let it overrun the tank cover, otherwise it's just going to shade the plants too much underneath. Speaking of which, the majority of the planting is the Pelanthium Pudrico status. This is a really easy carpeting plant. It needs thinning out every couple of weeks or so. A combination of Ludwigia palustris super red and Ludwigia and rubin. And then I've actually added some uh, Heteranthera zostafolia known as Stargrass. In the background you can see an Amazon sword, that's Echinodorus major. And I've even added a little bit of the Ludwigia palustris there as a epiphyte, which looks, looks, looks really interesting. Angels are absolutely stunning. I love these fish. Not the most natural looking fish, but I just love the way they look. I love that contrast with the orange and the blue. So a beautiful little tank. There is some other plants in there. There's some Sagittaria, I think, in the back. It's not quite growing as tall yet. The light ground really sets it off. Without the light ground, it really does change the whole vibe of the scope. <coughs> quite nice, you can see it from end on as well. And house plants around here as well. Um, let's move on to the jungle style irigumi. This is just a real hodgepodge of different plant species. Um, gosh, where do I start? We've got the Eleocharis Isicularis mini, or now known as Eleocharis um, Pacilla mini in the foreground, mixed in with Helanthium telenum green and Helanthium telenum red. There's also Eleocaulon Vietnam. Some more star grass there. I was growing stem plants, really love the chaotic texture. Some more Echinodorus major, Ludwig ears again, Hygrophila polysperma, you can see a lampi there, it's the only one lampi. I did actually have about 10 or 20 in here, unfortunately they all kind of died off, I think they're quite short lived. So we've just got one guy in there at the moment and there's a few platies which I just think really just add a little bit of movement and colour of course. It's a sands on Iwagumi, you might just be able to see the three stones there. And it's just a real kind of chaotic but naturalistic mix of plants, kind of inspired by Thais Treatment's Aqua Chaos kind of style. And uh, did have some quite severe algae issues at the beginning of this tank, but as you can see, it's uh, looking really healthy and vibrant right now. A few pandagaras as well to help with algae. And there is some autosynclus in there as well. Okay, moving on to my largest aquarium at home. This is the Uaze Highline 400. Quite a few videos on this now, maintenance and other style of videos. Um, probably one of the best aquascopes I've ever created, certainly one of the most long term. And it's just a real joy to live with. Maintenance is relatively straightforward for a big tank, just huge water change every week, or so huge, 50% or so. Clean the filters, the Biomaster pre filters, trim the plants as needed, which is basically thinning out the swords and the crypts, which are becoming quite monstrous. <laughs> and um, yeah, the Anubias in particular, I uh, really enjoy watching develop and mature over the months. 
This is quite interesting what's going on in the foreground now. Got some of the new uh, Cryptochorini Nurii. This is, has a beautiful texture and colour on the leaf. Really interesting, it's just sort of carpeting really slowly. And some also some mini hair grass, some Marsalea as well. And then uh, Elio Canon Vietnam becoming one of my favourite sort of foreground, midground plants. Blueberry tetras, these must be at least three, four years old now. And uh, yeah, got some little gobies in there as well. Some other tetras, bento's eye tetra, lemons, orange lemon. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep this running for the time being. No, no, no need to change it. I just really enjoy living with it. I do have a new plant that I've added. It's still in its pots at the moment. This is Cryptochorini spiridis. So when I get back from Tropica uh, next weekend, I'll probably plant this amongst the other crypts just to add another texture. Filtration is to Arazo Biomaster 850s in my CO2, which is by a Strideways reg. This is a great regulator, which is running this aquarium, of course, and then the Iwagumi. You can see the bubble rate, it's about probably four bubbles a second on this tank and about one bubble a second on the Iwagumi. Lighting at the moment is two twin star LED lamps, not designed to be under a hood, but they have released a new version, a waterproof version. So you can look out for that. This is the 1200 and the 900 on two separate timers and the 900 at the back is on for 10 hours or so now and then the 1200 is only on for three hours or so uh, so that's the aquariums in the kind of main kind of gallery area and now moving on to the cichlid tank so here we have the highline 300 room divider sadly no longer produced by a in the uk um, which is a shame because i think it's a, an amazing tank it separates my desk area from the living area and the cichlids are now at least five years old. I have um, experienced a couple of old age deaths recently which is quite sad to see but you know these fish don't live forever of course. <coughs> he's just discovered a bird in their garden. Oh. Go on then, there you go. Going out. in again. <laughs> Reflections are quite bad at the moment uh, but you can see the Anubius there. By far the most sort of dominant Anubius now is the mini, is not the mini, it's the coin leaf. I did have some Pinto and Corinne in there but the coin leaf seems to have dominated. I was running kind of a low level of CO2 in here, I've turned that off and uh, the coin leaf is still thriving as you can see. You want to see some algae in there, but that's to be expected in this kind of system. Such a high fish load, we're feeding quite a lot of fish food every day to obviously keep the fish well fed. And this gets a 75% water change every week and is filtered with two uh, Biomaster 850s again. So I hope you enjoyed that quick little tour of the tanks at home. I'm filming these just before I set off for Tropica again. I'm going there every two weeks at the moment in preparation for Interzoo, where I, my job is basically to maintain the aquascapes that will be showing off there in May. So just thought I'd give you a quick tour before I go, because you never know during my absence, the tanks might not look quite so good when I get back. But uh, thanks to my stepson, Toby, for keeping an eye on them in my absence. He feeds the fish, adds a liquid fertilizer, and just keeps an eye on the equipment and make sure everything's running as it should be. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys, if you did hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so yet and let me know what's your favourite tank and should I rescape one of them? If I did, I think it would be this one because it's just so unmanageable. <laughs> I do enjoy it though, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But let me know if you did rescape the Scaper Line 60, what would you like to see in there?